Okay. Let me see if I can change the view here. Okay, so welcome to our call, you guys. It's July 1st, I can't even believe it. Um, and, you know, I, I think that it's a little hard to have a call this week because it's holiday week, but Summit was like a huge, huge event in terms of um, like announcements that were being made and takeaways. And I really just did not want to let the time pass without us being able to share like what the biggest takeaways were because I feel like the biggest thing, you know, with these live events is they always say people don't implement, like 80% or 90% of the people that come away don't implement anything that they learned. And if there's one thing I can say is that like, this is the number one event each year that Beachbody puts on where like literally everything that you learn is so amazing. It lights a fire in you. It can literally change your business if you let it. And I think that the biggest piece is like coming home and actually putting some things into place that you learn. So I asked all the ladies that attended to share a couple takeaways tonight. Before we get into that, I thought I would um, actually just give a couple of updates. I was trying to figure out how to change this view. So like, okay, there we go. So when it's recorded, it won't look funny. Um, so Okay, July 1st, you guys, this is crazy. Um, right now, there's a lot of different things going on and coming up, so I just want to briefly go through them, and we can, I think, schedule a few more calls this month because it is this Beat Your Best month, um, but for now, I'll at least kind of go through the most important stuff. So what we have going on as a team right now, I think is always the most important. One is this week we're doing a three-day refresh challenge group. We have some people doing a three-day refresh pre-4th of July, other people doing it after 4th of July. Um, and honestly, even if you have people still coming to you interested in joining a group, it's always great to ask them if they would like to start with a three day refresh because it's only like 40 bucks or something with a challenge pack. Um, and it's a great way to either start a program or end a program. So, um, we have that going on this week. We also have a new coach training that I'm putting together for the week. Um, it might be like 10 days. I haven't really figured it all out yet. I was trying to basically put together something that we could go back and use later for other new coaches that are coming in. Um, even if that's not like the group that we use forever, like at least creating some sort of document from it. So people have like a step-by-step -step go through when they come in as a coach. I know that Beachbody does their thing, our upline teams have their thing, but I wanted just to have something that like felt like it kind of boiled everything down for everyone. Um, so if you guys have suggestions on that or like specific things that you want more information on, please let me know. It's not just really for new coaches, um, but I definitely wanted it to be like a good jumping off point for people who maybe don't necessarily have a game plan in place, which is a lot of our newer coaches as of late. I'm noticing they're great at posting, but not necessarily um, feeling like they're at a point where they can go out and invite. And all I can say is, you know, you got to do the things, but I know that sometimes kind of having a little bit more um, information on getting there is huge. Um, so if you have feedback on that, let me know. And then the last piece is Lift 4 is coming out on July 16th. When someone signs up for Lift 4 as a challenge pack, though, through July 16th, it's on promotion for $10 off. So we really have to invite to Lift 4 now, and our Lift 4 launch group is open. Um, we're going to start posting in it daily and maybe do like a blitz um, next week or something where we share everything in a day. So make sure you're getting your people in there um, and letting us kind of put the information in front of them to tell them about the program. I think this is gonna be a really great program, first of all, for your customers who maybe have fallen off because they feel overwhelmed by you know, a seven day a week program. Also, it's gonna be really great for your people who give you no's because they have a gym or give you no's because they like to run. Like This honestly is gonna be something that pairs really well with those people that have other things that they're doing. Um, and then also keep in mind that you can set somebody up with Lift 4 and to be Mindset you can take a to be mindset customer and put them into lift four. I think the two of those go really well together too, because I think that lift four is a very approachable program um, for people who maybe aren't already like super active with working out. So I wanted you to keep those things in mind. The other thing is this is called like the beat your best month. And so Beachbody has like rolled out all this new recognition based around success club. And this month is kind of like the start of it. Um, and think of it as like an individual team cup in a way. 
Um, I want us to go like all out for this, you guys. I feel like if we have a coach that's never helped a customer, this would be the month to help your first customer. If you have a coach that's never hit success club, like this is the month you want to hit success club. If you yourself have only ever hit success club five, like make this your month to get to 10. Beachbody is going to give you special recognition, which is great. But as a team, I want us to, to do some added recognition and obviously like your business is going to move forward. So they're incentivizing the things that obviously help your business grow, which you know, it's kind of a no brainer. You know, those things honestly are the behaviors that will get you that income growth month on month. But like setting the bar really high for yourself this month is a great way to start the second half of the year. If you have not um, hit that rank that you're looking for, make this month your month to do it. Go all out. And I think this summit theme is going to be great to kind of like move into next. I mean, the theme was believe in you. And I can honestly say, the biggest takeaway I had has to do with my mindset myself and what I think I'm worthy of. So I asked Stacy, I asked Heather, I asked Courtney, I asked Kelly, Molly, and um, Megan, who I, I don't see on here, to share their two biggest takeaways and then the one thing that they're going to implement in their business as a result of um, their takeaways. So I want to just kind of like throw it out there for you. Stacy. maybe if you want to go first since you're driving, um, that might be easiest. And then we sure. can come. Um, and I just got off the interstate, so I guess it's an okay time. Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure with the music. Um, Robert's still rocking out the VBS music. Um, so I would say one of mine, and I know a few other coaches agree with this, like the biggest takeaway to see is like, unlike some of the other ones that were still like a little questionable about like Beachbody a little bit doing this, I was like reassured on how much, hey, I've got to for a few minutes. Um, <laughs> um, I was much more like reassured on like just how much the whole company like cares for us and how much, you know, they want you to achieve, like achieve success and not just achieve like financial success, but like yourself just to improve, um, Robert, please stop. Give mommy like two minutes. That's enough. I'm sorry. Um, and then the um, other thing was just for, and this has been a, like a limiting belief I've always kind of dealt with is just being nervous about reaching out to certain people um, and them thinking like I'm being salesy or whatever. But I've got like, it helped me, you know, again, like, realize like how much I'm trying to help them like how me reaching out to them is because I care and that you know I've got you know all the, uh, myself and the team and the resources that can you know get them in such a better you know jump start something or um you know just all, you know, just feel better about their self and I'm helping them. I'm not like selling them something. Um, and I plan to implement just, um, more, you know, inviting, especially to coaching and, um, and, <laughs> um, and then also, um, like, you know, stepping out of my comfort zones more with sharing on social media um, with, you know, not, not worrying about what other people think so much, I guess that's my stuff. Thanks, Stacy. Um, does anybody in particular want to go next or have something that they must go do? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, um, Kelly, do you want to go next? Sorry, I'm not good at these Zoom calls and unmuting myself. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, so this is terrible. I cannot remember his name. Sarah, what was the name of the keynote speaker that wrote the happiness book? Sean Acor. Sean Acor. Yes. Um, I just really loved, yes, Sean Acor. I loved his talk and just his explanation of how people, you know, like somebody that 
is a negative person that if they did for 21 days positive affirmations and just said something good about their day that they could go from a negative person to like a low level positive person and that really spoke to me because I think I've always thought of myself as somebody that's pretty pessimistic even though for some reason sometimes my friends will say I'm optimistic so I don't know maybe I just like hide that negativity that like I show my spouse and like others that are really close to me maybe I'm good at somewhat hiding that but I've always thought of myself as somewhat negative and just a lot of negative self-talk as well as um, a lot of limiting beliefs. So I really liked the thought of doing that challenge. So I ordered the book, but for some reason it hasn't come yet. Um, and I'm just going to do kind of a challenge and just kind of post about it because I feel like a lot of people, you know, for the month of November, will do this like thankfulness thing. And, you know, that's nice, but I think it's good just to remember that like we can be thankful and that we can be, you know, give aff positive affirmations to others as well, like any time of the year. Um, and that's one of the things that I really like about Beachbody is that like we spend so much time, I feel like lifting each other up and I really think it does help with your like level of positivity. It just changes your dynamic, especially like with other women. Um, I feel like it's really helped me take out a lot of like maybe insecurities that I have or jealousy because like I get to spend my time lifting others up. So I find that my interactions with others kind of tend to be the same. Um, but so I'm going to do like a 21 day challenge and just see if I can get any participation from any friends or anything like that. Um, let's see my other takeaway. I guess would be that I really liked the way that Summit didn't just, it wasn't just like salesy and being like, let's push our products. Let's push Shakeology. I did like, obviously that they gave us some information on, you know, how the products are good and can help people. But I did like that. They're like, you know, first and foremost, you've got to believe in yourself and you have to um, take care of yourself in order to help anybody else. And of course we know that, but it's just a really good thing to hear. And I thought it was just really positive to be a part of a company that wants me to be the best me that I can be so that I can help others. So that's all I have. No, I, th I think that's really good, Kelly. I think um, like a gratitude challenge is an awesome idea. And honestly, I think that kind of the way I built my business in the beginning was by free groups and we've gotten so far away from it at times because like Beachbody put out this clean week thing and we feel like we have to run free groups all around clean week, which logistically makes you have all these tasks with sending out links and making people register. When in the beginning, like the free groups we did could have been like five days of productivity, like wake up earlier and get something done or a personal development challenge or a gratitude challenge. And I think that honestly, um, showing that it's not all about like getting a workout in, sticking to a nutrition plan and drinking a shake is like, it should be what we go for, you know, like whatever you think is going to benefit you is what I always suggest people to run groups around, you know, because I feel like there's somebody else out there that needs it. And I think that it's good to come up with other ideas for it, you know, like maybe Thanksgiving or gratitude challenges don't just happen in November, <laughs> you know, like maybe you work for it all year long. So I think that's cool. Thanks for sharing. Heather, you look like you're deep in thought and you want to share something. <laughs> I'm so deep in thought. <laughs> my kids, go away. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So I think like my biggest takeaway um, going in what I thought was really cool is, was the diversity of all the coaches there. So I mean, every age, shape, color, I mean, anybody can do this. And then watching, you know, some of these top coaches, really, you can just, I don't know, they, they just are real people just like us. And the fact that if they can do it, like, so can I. Like, that fact just – really sank in with me like which goes to limiting beliefs you know that 
for so many times off and on, like I've told myself, like, yeah, there's no way that I could be a top coach. But you go and you really like get to see that, yes, like you really can do this. You just have to like believe in yourself and, um, you know, stop telling yourself that you can't really. And that's something that, you know, they try to bring home to us every single week with the national wake up call and, you know, through all of the resources that they give us throughout the year. But I don't know, there's something about actually going that really like brings it home for you, you know? So that was like really my biggest takeaway. And then, um, so in that, like, it allowed me to really be able to sit down and decide like, okay, so what really are my goals for the rest of the year? And what do I need to get there? What do I need to do to get there? So obviously, you know, inviting, but you know, I think I, it helped me to identify some of the areas that I know I've been um, lacking in and to really like work harder on those. So for me, those would be tracking and following up and knowing exactly who I'm talking to. Hold on, honey. Okay. And um, consistency, like with posting and whatnot. So even if I may not have like this really awesome post um, thought out, you know, I think just by being um, present in people's news feeds keeps you relevant in their mind, you know? So, um, and then the other thing for me is planning my days. So I think I'm going to go back to reading the miracle morning and like starting that again, you know, just so I can more effectively like plan my day and work my business and be more productive. And I think I'll see like my business grow more, you know, by doing that too. So, but really, like I said, the biggest takeaway was seeing like regular people who have turned this into a very successful business and like realizing that anybody can do it. So that's it for me. No, I think that's great. I think honestly, like we had, um, just for reference, mm -hmm. like they did an elite panel and I think she, she probably is like one of the first black five-star diamond coaches was on the panel. And she said that she came last year and she looked around and she's like, there are not enough people like me in this room. So she literally made it her mission to go out and bring more people of color to summit. And then now that we've expanded into like Canada and you have a huge French population. They are putting out Spanish speaking programs. You've got more Spanish speaking people. They've expanded into the UK. So you're getting like more diversity in Europe, but like it is not like, you know, people who always say they need to be in the best shape to be a coach. Like if you've gone to one of these live events and you've seen it, you now have a story to tell them, be like, listen, you're in way better shape than half the people I saw there. You've got this, you know, <laughs> like doesn't matter. Like we accept everyone. And we saw people in Shanti's workout who weighed, I don't know, 300 pounds. And they were modifying everything, but they were in there doing it. And I think that's the most powerful part about it. You know, like there is no physical requirement on this. Yes, they did. All right. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Um, Molly, Courtney. Molly, you want to go next? Go for it, girl. Oh, wait. You, un you muted yourself after I unmuted you. Molly, where did you go? I will unmute you. All right. No, now you're still missing. Is your volume up? You want to just dial back in, maybe? Courtney? I think Courtney went to put, had a Corey Brian. No, she's back. I'm back. Oh. I'm... Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Poor Molly. <laughs> okay. So let me see. I have my notes in my phone. 
I think um, one of my biggest aha moments, I think, was as I was listening to all of those coaches and Elite and Melanie Mitro, you know, all the way up to the top, I was noticing that they have every single fear that I either currently have or have had in the past. And I think, I mean, repeatedly over and over, it was the same step. And I thought, okay, so they have the same fears. I have the same fears. Probably most of our customers and a lot of, uh, you know, our coaches, we all have the same fears. And I think I just kind of had that moment that I was like, you know, I can either squash those fears now and learn from their mistakes because most of them, you know, were saying, I did nothing for the first year or it took me two years or, you know, whatever. And I'm, I'm right at a year into coaching. And I guess I just kind of had that, okay, you need to stop <laughs> right now and turn it around and not let those same fears of what people think or that you're salesy, you know, you know, the list goes on and on that we all for the most part feel, you know, my post isn't cool enough, so I'm not going to post today or I'm going to kind of shy away from social media because nothing cool is going on in my life. And I think just hearing, you know, just like Heather was saying, the being present and the inviting is the most important thing to do. And you can either start now and learn from their mistakes because almost every single one of them wish that they would have just flipped the switch earlier. Um, and I think constantly doing that check every month with yourself, you know, if you have that, switch flipped or if you're still letting you know those fears and um what's the word limiting beliefs you know get in your way so I think that was my first one and then kind of still to the salesy aspect how we all tend to feel that way or, or fear that we're going to come off that way and I think Sarah has even said this to me before but everybody is selling something and those words have kind of stuck in my head um, from Sarah, but I kind of had another aha moment about that at Summit that really everybody supports something, they market for something, whether you're a nurse, like I'm still selling my services, you know, at the hospital. I don't know why we fear so much, you know, coming off salesy and again, everyone's selling something. So I think we need to just stop that fear. Um, we have, I think, the best opportunity that we, of course, we have to sell, you know, to make any kind of income if we want to be financially profitable, but we get the opportunity to, to change people's lives. And I know we hear that all the time, but for some reason that just kind of stuck in my head that, that everybody's selling something. I get to sell something that literally is not a gimmick. It's something that can literally change somebody's lives, whether it's weight loss, whether it's their nutrition, whether it's, you know, making their family healthy, their self-confidence, their depression, or, you know, with the business as well and helping with them, them financially. So, um, those were my main two things is to, you know, yeah, I'm selling you something. Not if you don't need it. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to sell you something that you don't need that you're not going to use that won't change your life, um, you know, but at the same time, I don't know, I'm just, I'm kind of over it, you know, the whole salesy part. I think that's it. Well, I have to say, like, um, there was this other coach and her story stuck out to me the most, but she literally started coaching at a time when her family was so financially strapped that she couldn't even let her kids go back for seconds because they didn't have money for food. And she said at the end, coaching has allowed me to give my kids a second serving of food when I otherwise would Oh my gosh, I lost it. And I think honestly, you guys, like we, we put people's objections in for them. Like they don't have money for this or like this is too expensive for that person or I can't really see them coaching because they have five kids and they don't have any time. That mother of five that like, I don't, I don't know how many kids she had, but that came up on stage and said, this provided me the opportunity to give them the better life. Like think about those people that you aren't inviting because you think you have all these objections on their behalf and flip the switch a little bit and say, if I could show this person how to 
maybe do exactly what I do and help two to three people a month or help three to five people a month think about the possibilities for them and their family. Like that should be the perspective, not this person can't afford to do this or this person like, you know, wouldn't have the time to do this. That's not your story to write. It's like your gift to try to give them. Um, and I think that hearing it that way is a huge shift because a lot of us don't have that person that has that story with us yet, you know? Um, but I think that's a, a very good takeaway, Courtney. I think that honestly, like we are our own worst enemies and we are the ones who hold ourselves back when the person on the receiving end could have a totally different need for this than we do. Molly, are you back? <laughs> I think so. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I don't think I had the microphone turned off. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm going to be a little repetitive, but just so you know, I totally wrote it out first. Um, so the biggest thing for me was um, kind of to echo what I think Stacy, Heather, or several other people said was um, seeing how legitimate this is and um, actual people's lives changed. You know, I think it's one thing even to see pictures of it posted and that kind of stuff. But when you're there and you actually get to see these people, these real people on stage and see how much, you know, one thing turned into something else, turned into something else that just changed their life. And it all started with somewhere, starting with some program. Um, and that, so that was, that was to me like the biggest thing was like, wow, this really is like real, real. Um, and then um, how much success everybody you know, can have together. And it's really all about everybody helping each other. Um, and when you help each other succeed, you succeed as well. Um, and so seeing that and seeing the teams of people and, and that part of it, I think was really, really inspiring. Um, and then my one big takeaway is kind of a mashup of what everybody has kind of said, um, to actually do the, do the stuff, to do the posts every single day. Like Heather said, even if you think it's something not interesting, um, you know, to, to stay relevant. Um, and one of the speakers talked about, um, just keeping it true to who you are, um, in your posts. And so like, you know, if you have kids, you know, in your life revolve revolves around your kids, make posts about your kids. If you don't, you know, and you have dogs or cats or whatever, like make it be true to you. And so that was a little bit, I thought helpful for me to kind of tailor like, okay, I know I can make maybe some shorter posts, you know, but that are more, you know, true to me. Um, but maybe it's not something that I think that's necessarily super inspiring. Um, but to put, to do all of those vital behaviors and to do it every day and to not be scared, um, to jump in. Um, so I think at the risk of not sounding even more repetitive, um, I think my takeaways are kind of the same as everybody else's, but it was just really, really inspiring. I think overall to see just how, how much this has changed so many people's lives. And like you said, how many people it reaches. Thanks, Molly. Okay, so I just thought I would kind of wrap it up with a couple of my takeaways too. Um, and then if anybody has questions, Amber or Melinda, um, and then we'll obviously post the recording, then we can answer them. Um, obviously, I think everybody that's on the call will tell you that getting there and experiencing it is totally worth it. Um, I know that the summit tickets are on sale for $130 through. July something or other. Um, but seriously, you guys, if you like want to be here and you want to make this a long-term plan, um, I would get there if, if you can. I think it's honestly the best $130 you'll ever spend on a business, to be honest. And this is your business. Um, and I honestly think that, you know, just getting to work out live with the trainers, be with the team, kind of fuel off of other people's energy and come back from it your business will see an immediate impact from it because I guarantee the level of activity and how serious you take it will change. Um, which is huge. You know, I think a lot of us don't take this business seriously when we come in because it's like you get free enrollment to be a coach and it's 16 bucks a month. Well, that's about the cheapest business you could possibly have. Um, and then a lot of people don't really ever do much with it because we let fear stop us. But the moment that you start actually taking it seriously and seeing the compound effect of your activities each day, then it becomes something pretty immeasurable over time. Um, so I hope that this can be a catalyst for some people 
um, who are listening to know that this is possible for you too. If you haven't watched some of the recordings we posted from like Emily Favre, um, or I, I think we posted Bonnie Ingalls training, please do. It is like these people know what they're doing. It's the best business training you can get for a weekend. Um, and it's pretty amazing. So my big takeaways, honestly, this year were all about mindset, but also about like, you know, we look at this as like workouts and we look at it as supplements or Shakeology or groups. And the, the vice president of global sales spoke and he was talking about the duplication of goodness and like how it really is our responsibility in this to like take something that's really good and positive and impact others with it. And he said it might, he said at one point, and this really stuck with me, like it, it probably doesn't seem like you're making history at the time. And yeah, I mean, our history is not going to maybe go down in like an encyclopedia or like a, a book or, you know, whatever. But honestly, you guys, I can tell you from doing this for three years that like just having somebody say, thank you for believing in me is like the biggest boost of confidence and the biggest sense of purpose aside from being a mom that I've ever received. And I think we often look at like success club or selling a challenge pack in this business is like the end all be all. And really in this, we we're supposed to give people hope and we're supposed to give people positivity and we're supposed to show them that there's something good in them and there's something good in what we have to offer. And I think like hearing him speak, and this, this is another quote that he said, and I wanted to share it. It's not what you leave to them that matters. It's what you leave in them. If you leave enough in them, you won't need to leave anything to them. And he was talking about his kids with this, but I also think it's like what we can do with our coaches. It's what we could do with our challengers. Like if we like help them see that they can believe in themselves, like somebody has told us that we can believe in ourselves, like that is a very powerful thing. And the ripple effect of that can be really amazing. And I don't, mean to sound like really cheesy and like world changing here, but like you honestly, if you were in a position where you felt like you were alone or lonely or like kind of suffering in silence on your own, even though you had this great family situation around you, think about how many other people out there are in the same exact position as you. And I guarantee it's so many people. And if you can just be that, you know, that little like light like twinkling light for them, you know, help them see that like, maybe I don't have to feel like this forever. That is huge. And so I think for me coming back and really like taking my conversations with people so much more seriously, like really asking them like, why is this important for you now? Or what, what's really going on with you that like this would help improve. And I had a conversation with a girl last night and my whole like perspective has changed. I'm not looking at her like a customer or a commission, you know, like I'm looking at her as a person that like, I want her to feel good so she can go out and make five other people feel good, you know? And I think if we kind of approached our people like that, like think about how much more amazing our challenge groups will get. They're already really great. Think about how much greater your business gets because you've turned every person into like the potential to be a coach because you've taught them in a way like how they can see their own self-worth and maybe even be better for other people and help other people see they can be better. That is really deep, I know, but like for some reason for me, that stuck out to me when he spoke. I was like in tears the whole time. He was talking to his daughter as he was saying a lot of these things and he was talking about his family. And I think we obviously like we have to make our bigger impact at home. But like if we take that same perspective and pour it into other people as we encounter them, that's a pretty tremendous thing. Um, and I think that I've never really felt very significant <laughs> outside of this. So that's where I kind of feel some of my significance is I know I now know what to do and I can tell other people in a way what to do. Um, and then the other thing is Michelle Meyer spoke and she is going to be on the National Wake Up Call tomorrow. So I would encourage you to listen to her. She's um, a wonderful coach from North Carolina. She runs a faith-based business organization and she's been a coach forever. But she, and I think a lot of people have posted about this, but she talked about how it's our responsibility in this as a coach. It's, it's an opportunity, yes, but it's our responsibility. And um, really, it's our responsibility to pay it forward to other people. And she talked about selfless ambition and how we can serve other people. And I think it ties into the same thing. But like, you know, really, if you can go into your conversations with people like even if they say no to you, like, you know, you just keep carrying on the conversation. See if you can leave them with something more positive than where you started the conversation with. Um, and, you know, she talked a lot about building trust and 
building relationships with people and maybe it gets to a sale or a challenge group or success club or whatever, but maybe it doesn't. Um, but I think that, you know, if we can impact people in that positive way and be more of like a service minded person, when we go into these encounters with people that honestly, our business will only grow from it. So those are my like two biggest takeaways. And I think the one thing that I just, I wanted to implement was just taking more time with people, you know, like offering the phone call right off the bat. When I get on the phone with them, like maybe talking to them about their family and what their like vision is for themselves and what their like, you know, ideal day would look like as opposed to just what's your weight loss goal and how many days a week do you want to work out? And I feel like just kind of making it more relationship oriented. And that's how I started in this. But over time, it got to be like, you know, I was busy and I was trying to be very efficient. And I just want to go back to like the spending more time, you know, like developing those relationships with people. So if you can tune into her national wake up call tomorrow, I'm sure it's going to be really good. And then also the wake up call for this past week was great. She, you know, for all the ladies that went, talked about what to do to like make sure you're implementing what you learned. And just talked about like kind of efficiency in your business, tracking in your business, like the basics. So I kind of wanted to reiterate a lot of that in the new coach training. And I think we're down to like the fab seven here. <laughs> Megan, did you want to chat while you're on? Sorry. Yeah, sorry, y'all. I got on like 30 minutes late. We changed Blake's feeding schedule. So oh, now yeah. he's like eating earlier. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, I, I, I guess y'all probably, most of y'all listened to me earlier, but I mean, just summit was amazing. I mean, I think that my biggest thing was just believing that, you know, I can do this. Sorry. I got people shooting off fireworks too. <laughs> um, just believing that I can do this, um, with you ladies and I guess just having the courage to reach out to people. Um, just a little bit I've done this weekend, you know, I feel like it's paying off and, you know, kind of connecting with people that, you know, I guess I was scared to reach out to and, you know, just taking that step to do that. So. Well, I'm still having like post summit depression, but <laughs> I <know. laughs> well, I seriously am because now I'm going back to work tomorrow. So <laughs> tonight's oh, been crazy. I'm like, I've been out of work for like 10 days and now I have to go back to work tomorrow, <laughs> uh, but it's only a two day week. So <laughs> I can't complain too much. Yeah, you, had a, you had an emotional couple of weeks on the body of your place and things like that. Yeah. Well, next year, y'all, I can't wait. <laughs> I know, I'm excited. Okay, so, um, you know, for those of you, obviously, um, I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>